Guys, how's it going? Hopefully everybody out there is having a wicked day. It finally happened. I got Adam Neely to gate crash the SBL YouTube channel. The lesson you're about to check out, guys, it blew my mind. I was there while Adam was filming it. Um, hopefully it will blow yours as well. Um, in a nutshell, we partnered with Adam to create a fantastic course for the membership at scottsbasslessons.com, but I wanted to share one of the lessons with you guys just because it rocked my world so much. At the end of the video, I will put a trailer for Adam's course as well over at scottsbasslessons.com. If you want to find out any more about it after you've watched the trailer, click the link below. Other than that, Adam, take it away. So that tune was Sequence Start, another tune by my band Sungazer. And this is kind of a, a tune that explores a concept uh, known as quintuplets. Now, whenever you split a normal quarter note up into parts, you normally think about splitting it into eighth notes or triplets, maybe sixteenth notes. And quintuplets are when you split a quarter note into groups of five instead of groups of two, three, or four. And this is very rarely done. Um, speaking of like being immersed in different sorts of odd time signatures and all that stuff as a language, it's even harder to be immersed in quintuplets just because it's not usually done as part of a groove. Now, one of the things with music theory that is important to know is that music theory is kind of, there's a, there's a famous quote from this uh, Nobel Prize winning physicist. He says, all of science is either physics or stamp collecting. What he means by that is, other kinds of science like biology or chemistry, he, in his mind, I forget this scientist's name, look, you can look it up, it's, it is the internet, um, but you can look it up, and he basically was saying like biology or chemistry, all you're doing in those fields is simply putting names to things like biology, this is this kind of plant, or this is this kind of thing. And uh, music theory is essentially the same thing. All you're doing is you're putting names to things, it's stamp collecting. So some people might think of this particular piece of music as being a very fast 5-8 or 5-16 or something like that. We're conceptualizing it as quintuplets, but it's essentially the same thing. We're just putting different names on concepts. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But this idea of it's not important what you call it, it's more about how you understand it. So with that in mind, uh, let's talk about quintuplets, how you actually feel them. Now, essentially, it's just counting to five, like five, four, but really fast. One, two, three, four, five. 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 And the easiest way I know about how to get into this is through this concept known as quintuplet swing. And quintuplet swing is a fairly new concept, and actually a lot of electronic music producers now have become kind of hip to this idea. Uh, basically, it's the idea that 
you're taking the it's you're taking the idea of a swing rhythm, like a swing tss, 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 but kind of grafting quintuplets over it. So normally when it we have swing eighth notes, you have two eighth notes, but the second eighth note is a little bit shorter than the first eighth note. They're kind of uneven. Um, there's a French term from the French Baroque called uh, notes in anglais. That is the worst French accent ever, but uh, in in elegant notes or in unbalanced notes. And uh, it's a concept that can then apply to swing rhythms from like jazz music. And the idea is that the first eighth note takes two triplets, second eighth note takes one triplet. And we're gonna play a very simple, cheesy uh, swing shuffle groove to show you how that works. So here, go for it. Sweet. So what that was was basically every eighth note, I was playing eighth notes, but they weren't even. And that's swing rhythm. And the ratio of two to one is important because when you talk about quintuplet swing, it's not going to be two to one. It's actually going to be the ratio of three to two. And it's if you think about regular straight eighth notes, it's kind of the ratio of one to one. The first eighth note has the same length as the second eighth note. And swing eighth notes is two to one, where it's twice the length. But this one is kind of halfway in the middle between the, the two. So it's kind of like somewhere in between swing and somewhere in between like straight rhythm. So it's like this weird nether realm in between. It sounds pretty cool. And that's why a lot of electronic music producers are now starting to experiment with this, because it kind of has that same sort of vibe as the unquantized Jay Dilla sort of uh, drum sort of thing. That was definitely not what the style of music that we're just playing, but it the same concept sort of applies. Halfway in between string, uh, swing and straight. So we're going to do that same cheesy groove, but with the quintuplet swing instead of the regular swing. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the way to get into this is to count to three really fast and then count to two really fast because three plus two equals five quintuplets. And it will take a while to really get into the feel of it, but if you think about it like this way, one, two, three, one, two, 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 one. That's essentially what it is. It's just sped up quite a bit from that. And if you do this enough and you're counting to yourself, that's all you do. You don't even need to play a bass. All you need to do is just count one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, and eventually you start start getting into this feeling that is kind of halfway in between the two. And for quintuplets, I feel like that's probably the most useful application for contemporary music because getting into any sort of groove with quintuplets can be very difficult. So the thing with 516 or 58 or quintuplets or anything is that the reason why you can't play fluidly in it immediately is because you really don't have any sort of ear for it and you also don't have any vocabulary for it. With 4-4 four, four, you hear all these different musical words quote unquote being spoken but it's not really the case with quintuplets. You don't really know what to play and we just learned one word which was three plus two and that's a great word to know but there's a lot of them actually that fit within the quintuplet scheme. There's actually uh, 31 of them and there's this helpful sheet that gives you all of the possible subdivisions of 5-8 or 5-16 or quintuplets and all of the different attacks so that you can go through and learn each one. And Sean and I are going to play maybe the first four of the second line, two attacks per measure. So this is going to be uh, the first couple of examples where you can hear two attacks per quintuplet grouping. And so it should sound like this. So going through each one of these and practicing them very slowly, it's probably slower than what we just played, is a great way of building vocabulary and familiarizing yourself in quintuplets or in 516 or in 58. And that's awesome because it really frees you to be able to be a little bit more rhythmically expressive with your ideas versus stuck sticking to just one particular sort of groove or one particular sort of rhythm. So another thing that we were doing in sequence start besides quintuplets is we were using technology in a little bit more interactive way than we did with ether. And this is kind of the fun, exciting thing about the new brave new world of electronic music is there's all sorts of cool things you can do with interacting 
with the computer and interacting with synthesizers and tracks and all sorts of things, by, but still be playing your instrument. And we did that uh, by using some pretty cool drum trigger ideas, and Sean will be able to explain exactly what his setup is. Sure. So I have a drum trigger connected to the kick drum here and one on the snare over here. And these detect the hits, the notes that I play, and that gets sent into my drum pad over here. And then the drum pad sends a MIDI signal to Adam's computer. And inside Adam's computer, um, he's running Ableton Live, and my uh, uh, drums are actually triggering synth sounds um, that are... Uh, that live inside that program there. <laughs> and um, the cool thing that we did is this is running on kind of an automated but open section, meaning that we can jam on this as long as we want, but it's going to be on this loop that syncs up with the chord progression. So we have, you know, uh, a four bar uh, or two bar um, chord progression loop and Basically, I can play any rhythm that I want, and the synth will follow me. Um, but all of those notes are going to automatically change in order to fit within the chords that are happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to play that section, and Sean's going to play kind of a simple kick snare sort of pattern at first, just so you can see how this technology is actually implemented. And then we're going to open it up a little bit like we did when we first perform it, just so you can also see how improvisation is really possible with this. There's no backing track going on while we're improvising, although we're using the computer as kind of like a backing loop that feeds the information to the synth that tells it when to change the chord. So I hope you get some inspiration from that. That's a really fun little device that we uh, took from Zach Danziger, actually, of the band uh, Edit Bunker and also Mr. Barrington, fantastic drummer. Um, one of the things that we do with all of our live setups is we have a click running in our ear. And we're going to talk a little bit about how that click relates to the music performance aspect after we perform our next song, which is a cover of a Jason Derulo song called Want to Want Me. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that as much as I did when I was there while Adam recorded it. Huge shout out to Adam for being so awesome and now obviously being one of the faculty members here at scottsbassessence.com and a huge shout out to you guys for tuning in each and every week and checking out the content that we're uploading on YouTube as well. Now if you're a member of scottsbassessence.com that course is now in the course library for you to check out. So go do so. If you're not a member yet, just go grab the 14 day free trial over at the website. And remember, if you wanna check out Adam's course, the link is below. Go check out Adam's course um, for the full details and you'll be able to check out the trailer there as well. Uh, other than that guys, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed. Bye. The kinds of bass players that would benefit from this course are bass players who are interested in music theory and also are interested in understanding the inner workings of how music might work. It's often a roadblock, I feel like, a lot of times with people who keep, who feel like they're learning a lot of theory, who feel like they're learning all the stuff that they need to, but they feel like they don't quite connect with it. There's not the sort of immediate interest in the material. There's, it kind of feels like the, it's all this dry, boring stuff that might relate to the music that they're playing, and it's fine, and they understand it, but they don't get excited about it. And I'm trying with this course to get people excited with some musical theory concepts that might, you know, not be what you typically will hear in a given bass course. Mm -hmm. 
thing that I like to try and do with people is try and get people excited about music theory. Try and get people excited about the things in music that might be a little bit too dry as the way that they're generally taught, but might get people excited anyway to learn that stuff and understand why we do the things that we do. Hey, my name is Adam Neely, and if you want to take your musical knowledge and your playing to the next level, this course is for you. Thank <laughs> you.